Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakaq, Wadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, those that are men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit. And Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakaq, Wadash, Brak, Thumb. To the elect of Israel, that scattered across the four corners of the globe. Now, earlier this year, um, on Fox News, you had this Edomite by the name of Jesse Waters asking the Israelites, you know, what's our beef? Well, this article is going to bring out the information concerning the beef that us Israelites, our so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans, primarily over here in America and around the world. This information that I'm about to bring out is going to give you information concerning the beef that us Israelites have with you Edomites, you so-called white people, and not only us, but our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ. This is the beef that we have with you. And you're going to have to pay for all the crimes that you've committed unto the Israelites, the Lord's people. You know, as it says in the book of Jeremiah 49 verse 12, you're not going to go unpunished, but you shall surely drink of it. Meaning you're going to drink the cup of slavery. You're going to drink the cup of torture and torment when it's your time to go into slavery. Because that's what's coming for you Edomites, man. Nothing but slavery, torture, death, destruction. Right? It says in the book of Nahum 1 verse 3 that Yahweh Bashmah Shai will not at all acquit the wicked. Who's the wicked? Esau Edom, pursuant to Malachi 1 verse 4. Job chapter 9 verse 24, Isaiah 26 verse 10. You're the border of wickedness, you Edomites, you so-called white people. And what we're going to read here is going to prove that through the spirit. So what we're looking at here is an article from www.facetofaceafrica.com. Now it says, the disturbing account of a black baby thrown into boiling water and flogged to death by slave ship captain. <laughs> oh man. It says, today many Africans are still living with memories of the pains and brutalities meted out to their ancestors by European and American slave traders. Now, the so-called Africans that they're referring to are not actually Africans. As a matter of fact, there's no such nation, right? You're not going to go to the Bible and find a nation known as the Africans. What you do have is what we call today the continent of Africa, and that was the land that was given unto the actual Hamites, the children or the sons of Ham, Ham, right? The son of Noah in the days of old. And right now, today, that land is predominantly inhabited by Hamites, the real Africans. Right, such as the Ethiopians, such as the Somalians, such as the Sudanese, such as the Kenyans, such as the South Africans. Now, amongst these countries that I just mentioned, you're going to have Israelites that are scattered amongst those people. Now, bear in mind, I didn't mention West Africa. Why? Because West Africa is primarily inhabited by Israelites, Hebrew Israelites. In countries such as Nigeria, Ghana, in countries such as Cameroon, you have Israelites out there. And the reason I need to say this is because, you know, Esau likes to put out these um, deceptions, you know, in terms of people's nationality, you know, calling people Africans, blacks, whites, Indians, Chinese, blah, 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 blah. But it's not so. Everyone's nationality can be found in the Holy Bible. And what we found out, you know, through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, is that the ones that you ignorantly call African Americans, West Indians, Haitians, Latinos, Native Americans, even the, the West Africans, right, Nigerians, Ghanaians, were actually Hebrew Israelites. That's what we found out through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmah Shai. And you so called Europeans, right, you so called Europeans, you so called white Americans, you go back to Esau, Edom, the Edomites, and that's your true nationality, okay? So let me read it again. It says, Today, many Africans are still living with memories of the pains and brutalities meted out to their ancestors by European and American slave traders. It says, The slave masters didn't just brutalize adults. Black children were also treated with cruelty. And again, there's no such thing as black children or black folk or black men or black women. All right. We're actually brown skinned, 
in terms of our uh, melanin, in terms of our complexion, and our nationality is Israel. That's our nationality. We're Israelites, and our language is Hebrew, and the Bible is our constitution. So let's just get that straight. It says, Bahamianology writes that African children bound for slavery in the colonies of the West Indies, Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, and South America, as well as the colonial states of America, were treated with a cruelty which almost defies the human imagination. And this is why you Edomites should be ashamed of yourself, all right? Because the hell that you put upon us, as, it, as we're reading here, it defies human imagination. That's why you're known as the wicked in the Bible, all right? You have Marshmallow Shai created you to be the wicked. And when you go into that word wicked in the Hebrew, it goes back to the Hebrew word rashai, which means criminal, guilty. And you're guilty of putting us Israelites or bringing us Israelites into captivity, stealing our land. First and foremost, the land of Israel. Then you stole this land that you know is America. You stole our nationality because out there in the land of Israel today, you're calling yourself Jews when you're not. You defaced the true images of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So you're guilty and you're the criminals, man. You're the criminals of the earth. And that's why Yahweh Bashmah Shai is going to destroy you as a people. You see, your mercy is going to come in form of Obadiah verse 18. That's going to be your mercy being destroyed, being totally annihilated through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmah Shai. Because <laughs> the hell that you're going to catch when you go into slavery is going to make. Our slavery, the hardcore bondage that we were in, looked like child's play. As a matter of fact, let's get a scripture real quick. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 10. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And this is what we're patiently waiting for. For you Edomites to be put down, for your kingdom to be destroyed, primarily over here in America, and for you to go into slavery underneath us Israelites, beginning with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. And that's what's coming. Slavery, hardcore slavery, man. This is the patience and the faith of the saints. And the saints is speaking about us Israelites, our so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. And what makes us the saints? Well, the fact that Yahweh Bashmah Shai chose us to be a special people above all nations. Pursuant to Deuteronomy 7 verse 6, Yahweh Bashmah Shai sanctified and made us a holy nation, a holy people, by giving us his laws, statutes, and commandments. And that's what makes us the saints. And you can refer to Psalms 50 verse 5, um, Psalms 148 verse 14. You know, to get more of an understanding on the Israelites being the saints, okay? The sanctified ones, the holies of this earth. But anyway, going back into this article, it says, Accounts state that to make the young ones obedient slaves, slave masters employed different inhumane tactics, including flogging to instill fear in them. The thought of babies and young ones experiencing outright barbarity, being beaten to a pulp, snatched from the arms of their mothers and sold to strangers is nothing any mother would wish for her enemy, let alone herself. And that's why it says this here in the curses, right? This is why Yahweh Bashmah Shai charged our people to read the book. Let me get that real quick in the book of Isaiah 34 verse 16. Because you Israelites out there need to start reading this Bible and get understanding through the, the true man of the Lord, beginning with the apostles and the elders and the men of great millstone and like-minded men. This is Isaiah 34 verse 16. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, Yahweh, that's the name of our heavenly father, right? And his only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, his name is Yahweh Shai. And their book is this holy Bible. This is our book. This is our constitution. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmah Shai, and read. No one of these shall fail. And that's speaking about all the prophecies that you read about in the Holy Bible. 
and was prophesied in the Holy Bible that if we was to not keep the law, statutes and commandments that Yahweh Bashmah Shai gave unto us through our forefather, Moses, then he was going to put curses upon our people. All right. And I'm going to read one of the curses that fell upon our people as it pertains to what we just read there in that article. Let me read this again from the article to give you a, a brief understanding of what we're going into here. It says, the thought of babies and young ones experiencing outright barbary, being beaten to a pulp, snatched from the arms of their mothers and sold to strangers, is nothing any mother would wish for her enemy, let alone herself. This is Deuteronomy 28. Let me go to verse 15 and then, and then jump down. This is Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. It says, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken, which the word hearken is old English for listen. It says, if thou will not hearken or listen unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power or thy God. And the voice of the Lord came in the form of Moses in the days of old unto our people. When Yahweh Bashmah Shai delivered our people out of ancient Egypt, it says to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And that's exactly what took place. That's why we found ourselves in the predicament that we're in right now. Underneath our enemies. The main enemy being Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Primarily over here in America, Babylon the Great. Now let's jump down. This is Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. It says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Meaning what? Yahweh Bashmah Hashai wasn't going to be with us in the time of our calamity. When our enemies in the form of Esau, Edom, will come up against us. And that's what took place. When these Edomites came, you know, to the interiors of Africa, the west coast of Africa, you know, modern day Nigeria, modern day Ghana modern day Sierra Leone, modern day Cameroon, which at that time, you know, that whole landmass was known as Negro land, all right? And it was inhabited by the Israelites, the southern kingdom to be exact, that fled Roman persecution during the time of 70 AD. And this is what took place, man. Let me read it one more time. It says, the thought of babies and young ones experiencing outright barbary, being beaten to a pulp, snatched from the arms of their mothers and sold to strangers, there's nothing any mother would wish for her enemy, let alone herself. It says sold to strangers. What does it say in the curses? This is Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. It says, And the Lord, Yahweh, shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And when did that take place? During the time of the transatlantic slave trade, right? That's when Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, came over to the interiors of West Africa and snatched our people from that landmass, okay? And brought them into Egypt, which is this place that you know is America, all right? Egypt really going back to the name Matazarium, which is one of the sons of Ham, all right? And when you go into that name Matazarium, it means to bind. And this is where us Israelites have been bound up for the past 500 years. Our so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans, We've been bound up here in the Americas, primarily North America, all right? Underneath the so-called white man, Esau, Edom. It says, and the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Yep, cargo slave ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning we're not going to see our land again, or we wouldn't see our land again, the land of Israel. It says, and there you shall be sold Unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you, meaning no man would redeem our people. And this is why our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai is so imperative, because He's the only one that can buy us back, redeem us from our sins, save us from our sins. Matthew 1 verse 21 He shall save His people from their sins. And what sin? Pursuant to 1 John chapter 3 verse 4, sin is the transgressing of the laws. Of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, and that's exactly what we did, and that's why Yahweh Bashmah Shai punished us as a people. As a matter of fact, let's get that real quick in the book of Baruch. I believe that's chapter 4.
Yep, this is Baruch 4 verse 6. I'll start from verse 5. It says, Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Verse 6. You are sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the Most High, whose name is Yahweh, to wrath, you were delivered unto your enemies. And that's why we were sold unto our enemies, because we moved Yahweh Bashmah Shai unto wrath, man. Because we started worshipping false gods, false um, deities, and that was spiritual fornication, spiritual adultery in the sight of Yahweh Bashmah Shai. That's why we were delivered unto our enemies, Esau, Edom. Okay? That's why we went into slavery. That's why we're serving our slavery still to this very day here in America, man. All right? Underneath Esau, Edom. Because we moved Yahweh Bashmah Shai unto wrath. But right now, the Lord is showing mercy by giving a portion of his people, a remnant of his people, known as the elect, this truth. And upon the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, that's when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is going to show his uttermost mercy by delivering a portion of our people, man. Okay? Because we need deliverance. We need deliverance from this wicked flesh. We need deliverance from our sins. And we need deliverance from the coming destruction. World War Three. So going back into this article, it says, What was more disheartening was the fact that many of these little black boys and girls were kept in cages in breeding farms as though they were animals. And this sometimes led to their deaths. <laughs> Documented pieces of evidence of the brutality faced by enslaved children abound by the story of a 10-month-old baby who was thrown into boiling water and flogged to death by a slave ship captain portrays wickedness at its peak. That's why it says this when we go to Malachi 1 and verse 4. It says, Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashmah Shai of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And that's what the Lord is going to do when he comes back with the holy angels. He's going to throw down the kingdom of Esau, Edom. All right? Babylon the Great here in America. And that's when this kingdom is going to be translated unto the Israelites. The righteous people. Our so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. Second Ezra 6 verse 9. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. It says Malachi 1 verse 4. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. The people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. The key part of the scripture being the border of wickedness, which applies unto Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. And what does it say here in this article? It says, documented pieces of evidence of the brutality faced by enslaved children, i.e. the Israelite children, Okay, that came over here on cargo slave ships that were forced to serve hardcore bondage over here in the Americas. It says, abound. But the story of a 10-month-old baby who was thrown into boiling water and flogged to death by a slave ship captain portrays wickedness at its peak. While black slaves were being transported from Africa, the 10-month-old baby was sulking and refusing to eat. This troubled the captain of the ship as the baby was definitely part of the money he would make from the trade. An account by the Liberator cited by Bahamianology.com writes that the captain subsequently took the baby from the mother and tried to force the baby to eat. He hit the baby who would still not eat and reportedly said, I'll make you eat or I'll kill you. The baby developed a swollen leg resulting from the manhandling from the captain. And here they've actually got the record of this account. It says, on board a slave ship, a child of about 10 months old took sulk and would not eat. The captain took up the child and flogged him and with an oath said, I'll make you eat or I'll kill you. From this and from other ill treatment, the child's leg swelled. And the captain ordered some water to be made hot for abating the swelling. But even his tender mercies were cruel. For the cook putting his hand into the water said it was too hot. Putting his feet in said the captain with an oath. 
the child was put into the water and the nails and the skin came all off his feet. <laughs> you know what? I can't even read any more of this because this is just fucking pissing me off. What I'm going to do is leave the link for this article in the description box. I'm going to go to a couple um, scriptures here and close out. This is the book of Zechariah. Chapter 1. Verse 15. And these are the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his prophet Zechariah. Concerning you Edomites and what you've done unto us Israelites. It says, And I am very sore displeased with the heathen, the main heathen being Esau, Edom, the so called white man, that are at ease. And you're over here in America at ease and around the world, but primarily over here in America because this is your stronghold, right? This is your safe haven, so to speak. It says, For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. And we're basically reading about how Esau forwarded the affliction of us Israelites when we was in hardcore bondage. And this is why Yahweh Bashmah Shai is going to destroy you. Okay? This is why Yahweh Bashmah Shai is going to have judgment without mercy. This is um, James 2, verse 13. It says, For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy. And what did it say in that article? It says, But even his tender mercies were cruel. For the cook, putting his hand into the water, said it was too hot. Put his feet in, said the captain, with an oath. The child was put into the water, and the nails and the skin came all off his feet. This is why you have Bashma Shai when it's time for you Edomites to go into slavery underneath us Israelites. This is why the Lord is going to have no mercy. Let's read it again. It says, For he shall have judgment, meaning Yahweh Bashma Shai and their people are going to have judgment upon you Edomites and the rest of you heathens. Okay? When you go into slavery, we're going to put punishments upon you. It says, Without mercy, that have showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. And in that day, we're going to rejoice, us Israelites, our so-called blacks, Latinos, and even Americans. That's why it says this here when we go to the book of Psalms. 149. Verse 5. It says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. And this is what's going to take place in our kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven. When Yahweh Bashmah Shai establishes our kingdom, the kingdom of Yasharala, beginning with our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Because we're joint heirs with our Lord, pursuant to Romans 8 verse 17. We're going to rejoice in that day. Okay, We're going to be joyful upon our beds in that day. Verse 6. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And that's literal. We're going to literally have a two-edged sword in our hand in that day. And we're going to put all types of punishments upon you heathen, upon you so-called white people. All right? You Edomites. Verse 7. To execute vengeance. And the word vengeance means payback. It says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. And who's that speaking about? Your wicked elite. Beginning with the Rothschilds. The Oppenheimers, the Rockefellers, the Reynolds, the DuPonts, the Gettys, so on and so forth. They're going to be the first fruits of slavery in that day. Verse 9. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And this is the judgment that's been written and it's going to come to pass. Now, let's go from there to Psalms. 137 and we'll start at verse 7 it says remember O lord the children of edom edom is speaking about you so-called white people the edomites all right adawamyam remember O yahweh marshim yahweh shai the children of edom in the day of jerusalem who said raise it raise it even to the foundation thereof because that's what you said during the time of our calamity all right when these babylonians came up against us in the ancient days you said, raise it, raise it, when they came and burnt down our temple. Verse 8, 
It says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. And bear in mind, it's equating Esau, Edom with being the daughter of Babylon. Okay? And that's alluding to Babylon the Great America, which is going to be destroyed during the time of World War III and when Yahweh Shai returns with the Holy Angels. That's when you're going to be destroyed. That's when you're going to go into slavery. All right? It says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be, the Israelite man, the servant of Yahweh Shai, because it's going to begin with the 144,000 servants of Yahweh Shai, the governing body of Yasharala, the governing body of Israel, the governing body of the Israelites. We're going to get first dibs, all right? Beginning with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, on putting our hands upon these Edomites in that day. It says, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. And how has he served us? Well, let's go back to that article. It says, To douse the swollen legs of the child, the captain asked his men to boil water, and then the unimaginable happened. The captain ordered that the baby's feet and nails be dipped in the hot water. Right after, the nails and skin of the baby's feet came off. Having no sympathy for the child, the captain used an oiled cloth to wrap the feet of the child and then tied the child to a heavy log of woods for three days. The captain wasn't done with the little child yet. He caught the child up and said, I'll make you eat or I'll be the death of you. He went on to flog the child until the child died. Psalms 137 verse 8. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, which is Esau, Edom, happy shall he be, the Israelites, that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Verse 9. Happy shall he be, that taketh and dasheth thy little ones, which is your babies, right, your little children, against the stones. Just gonna say whatever comes to my mind. The first thing I'm gonna say is, you fucking Edomites, you're in a lot of goddamn trouble because you didn't just take any old nation and enslave them and um, put us put us under your feet, but you did it to sovereigns, the children of Israel. The Yasha Yasha Allah Yah meaning He, Shah meaning Prince, which is royal, sovereigns. Our meaning power of God. We are the princes of God, and you enslaved us for a period of more than 400 years. So, what in the fuck do you think you're gonna get in return? You're gonna get cold, fucked up. We're gonna kick your ass, we're gonna break you up, we're gonna fuck you up, we're gonna work you in the fields, we're gonna work your ass every day. And you ain't gonna get no fucking bread. You ain't gonna have no shift, man. If we decide to make your motherfucking ass work two, three days straight, you gonna do it, bitch. You gonna do it, you motherfuckers. You got that time is on our side, not your side, man. You can do whatever you want, but you better do it fucking quick because your time is up, man.